Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for section 7.2, Finding Cube Roots. Our essential question for today is, how can patterns from finding square roots be used to find cube roots and other roots? Today, you will need your Jaguar dots on section 7.2, a pen or a pencil. You may find a highlighter useful, but leave those calculators behind and replace it with a multiplication table if you need it. Make sure you bring your bright ideas, your best effort, and as always, your problem solving skills. We're going to begin this lesson by recalling the rules for finding square roots of numbers to help us with cube roots. So we're looking at three scenarios, the square root of 36, the opposite of the square root of 36, and then plus or minus the square root of 36. So let's begin with the square root of 36. So when we have this, we want to take 36 and we want to break it into the prime factors or into at least twins. So we know that 36 is six times six. That's enough. If we remember our story about our mystical forest, we are trying to escape this mystical square root forest. And the only way to get out is to have a twin. And so our 36 really looks like six times six. And as we go through the tree, which is our square root, one of our twins disappears and the other one can actually leave. It's not a great story as far as happy endings, but it gets the job done and it helps us remember that we only get to keep one and then the other one goes away. Now this one is saying, take the opposite of the square root of 36. Well, since we know the square root of 36 is six, the opposite of it is going to be negative six. And the last one is saying plus or minus the square root of 36. And so we just need to remember to put the plus or minus in. So now this gets us back to this question. Can we do the square root of negative 36? And the answer is no, because there's no real solution. And why is there no real solution? Well, that's because we have to remember that when we are doing squares, the square, taking negative six squared is negative six times negative six, which is 36. And six squared is six times six, which is 36. And squares and square roots, those are inverses of each other. So there's no way for me to get negative 36 when I multiply the same number times itself. But when we get into cubes, that story is different. The cube of two, which is two to the third, which is two times two times two, looks different. These are triplets. So two cubed is eight, and eight is two times two times two. The cube of seven, which is seven cubed, which is seven times seven times seven, again, those are triplets, is 343. Seven times seven is 49, and 49 times seven is 343. Why do we care? Well, when we want to do the cube root of eight, we're going to break it into triplets. This number right here tells us what kind of quote unquote magical forest are we in? Are we in a magical forest that takes triplets to get out? Yes. The square root one is our standard magical forest. That's why there's nothing on it. So it's a little table and then the check mark and then the bar over it. Please make sure again that you're doing the check mark and the table, otherwise you're making a division sign. So now it's the cube root of two times two times two, and we're looking for triplets in this case. So it's really important that you understand that you are looking for triplets. And in this case, two are going to go away and only one comes out. So our answer then is two. So what happens when I have the cube root of one over 343? Well, in the same way that square roots let me split up a fraction, I get to do the same thing with cube roots. So I'm gonna take the cube root of one and the cube root of 343 and do that. And so I'm gonna break my triplets of ones, okay? So I'm gonna have one over and then my triplets of seven and I'm going to have seven. So again, what did I do? I took my ones right here and I, two of them are gonna vanish and my sevens and two of them are going to vanish. It's because I'm taking the cube root. 
And the cube root is just saying, what did you multiply out by itself? I multiplied the sevens out. I multiplied the sevens out and I multiplied the ones out. So I had groups of ones and groups of sevens. So let's look at the cube root of 729. So just like I did with square roots, I'm going to make a factor tree. And this time though, instead of looking for twins, I'm going to look for triplets. So 729, I happen to know that seven plus two is nine, and then nine plus nine is 81. So I know it's divisible by nine by my divisibility rules. And so it's nine times 81. And so nine, I know is three times three and 81 I know is nine times nine. So I'm going to keep bringing my threes down. So I'm only looking at one level when I'm done. And nine is three times three and I have three times three again. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six threes. So then I'm going to come over here and now I have the cube root and then I have to write this down three times. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And see how my bar doesn't go over all of them. I need to extend it out and make sure it does. And now this time I'm looking for groups of three at a time. So here's a group of three, which means I'm going to write it down once. And then I have another group of three right here. So I'm going to write it down another time. So now I have three times three, which is nine. So the cube root of 729 is nine. So that means if I wanted to check it, I would do nine times nine times nine. Well, nine times nine I know is 81. And 81 times nine, I know from what I did up above is 729. So what happens when I have a negative number? Well, we need to be really careful is what happens. Because our answers, the things that we're multiplying need to be exactly the same. So I have 512 and you know what? I know that 512 is divisible by two and that's about it. So two times 256 and then I have another two and 256 I know is divisible by two and 128 and 128 I know is divisible by four. How did I know it was divisible by four? Because I know 28 is divisible by four. And if the last two digits are divisible by four, the whole number is divisible by four. So four and 32. And so this is a two, another two and four I know is two and two. And 32 I know is four and eight. So depending on how good your multiplication skills are, you're gonna get through these faster or slower. If I had to keep on multiplying by two, I just keep multiplying by two. It just takes me longer. But I'm going to keep pulling these twos down and four I know is two and two and eight I know is two and four. At one point you'll get really good and you'll just call eight a two, two, two because you'll just know it. So I know f this is two and a two, two and two. So now I need to count up how many twos I have. I have, I'm going to switch to a different color real fast just so I can count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine twos. So nine of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And now I have to make sure I do the cube root of them. So make sure I have a cube root over them. And now I have to go pick up three at a time. So here's my first three. Whoops, that's not supposed to be three. It's supposed to be two because that's the number that's in the box. There's my second and there's another set of three. So two times two is four and four times two is eight. So the cube root of negative 512 is eight. Oh, there's a huge mistake here. And this is why we are doing this problem. The reason that we are doing this problem is because everything in there has got to get to that negative 512. So we have to make sure 
that this is going to happen. I do it. I, I would have done the problem exactly the same. It's just that these right here, you have to make sure that you end up with a negative answer. So these were all negative twos. And then this is a negative two times a negative two times a negative two. We'll put them in parentheses this time. So negative two times negative two is positive four. And then this is a negative two. So this is a negative eight. So we can have negatives in cube roots. We absolutely can. We just have to be super careful. Technically, when I was making this over here, I probably should have done this and then that and had this negative follow all the way through. Um, it gets super confusing. The way that I typically do it is I take care of it at the end. I know that if I have a negative here, my answer will also have a negative. So what do we do when we have a problem with its fractions? We just have to do those two separate factor trees and then put it back into a fractional answer. 125, I know, is 5 times 25, which is 5 and then 5 times 5. I'm actually going to just do my triplets right here because I can see it so easily. I see that there's a set of triplets, so my answer is going to be 5. The other one was 343. I know based on work we did before that this was 7 times 49. So 7 and then 7 times 7. There's my triplets, so this is going to be 7. So sometimes you can even do finding your triplets on the bottom of your factor tree. So this is going to equal, oh, let's go ahead and show it the work. The cube root of five times five times five over the cube root of seven times seven times seven. So then it ends up being five sevens. Example four, the volume of a cube is V equals S cubed or volume equals side length cubed. If the volume of a cube is 216 centimeters cubed, what is the side length? So here we have V equals S cubed, the, f the formula we were given. So we're gonna break this into what it is that we're gonna solve. So I'm gonna start off by listing out the variables and then trying to substitute in what we have. So right here it says the volume, that's V, the volume is 216. And so I can substitute that in. So now I know that I can replace V with 216. And now I have an equation I can solve because I only have one variable. So now I have this cubed. So how do I undo a cube? Well, I undo a cube with a cube root. So this cube and this cube root undo each other. So that I'm going to be left with an S right here. But this 216 and this cube root, I'm going to have to undo that somehow. So I have this 216. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a factor tree with that. So the 216 and the factor tree, I know that 216, I know the 16 is divisible by 4. So I'm using my divisibility rules to kind of break this down a little bit smaller. So I know that's 4. And when I divide that out, I got 54. So my four I know is two times two and 54 I know is six times nine. So the better you are at multiplication, absolutely the easier this is, but I can use my multiplication tables to help me. I can use a multiplication chart to help me. Remember to pull these all the way down because it will make it easier in the long run. Um, six is two times three and nine is three times three. So right there, I do have a really nice multiplication tree to help me out. But remember, I'm looking for cube roots this time, not square roots. So I'm going to be looking for triplets. So looking for things in groups of three to help me out here. And I am going to change a color to make it stand out a little bit more. So I have a group of three right here. So that's one set of twos and a group of three right here. So that's a group of threes. So when I look at that, I'm well on my way. So let's go ahead and rewrite this though with this two, 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 and that three times three. Let's go ahead and write that. 
So now I have the cube root of 2 times 2 times 2 and 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to the cube root of s cubed. So there's that group of 2 that I had already circled and that group of 3 that I had already circled. And so I have 2 times 3, which is 6. So 6 equals s, which means each side length is 6 centimeters long. So now what I'd like you to do is I would like you to create a problem where the answer is 6 times the cube root of 5 or 6 cube root 5 and explain to someone how it is that you did it. Thank you so much for showing up. And remember, this will take time to understand, but if you continue to practice problems, you will get better at it. Thank you so much for showing up. And remember, be kind to one another because we all can use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.